Hi, I'm Ryan. I run a group called Google Developer Group Cloud Pasadena, and we're going to build a dashboard that monitors data in real time. We're going to build this. This is an Angular 12 app using Firebase Firestore in chart.js. We're going to build this in five parts. First, the Firebase app, then an empty Angular app. We'll get the two to talk to each other. Then we'll put in chart.js and have this. And finally, we're going to make a sensor simulator. We're going to do this in two ways, one right in Angular and two in Python. So you can choose which one you're more comfortable with. And at the very end, we'll have this project. All right, first come to Firebase and go to console. We're going to add a new project. For the narrative of this tutorial, I'm going to have it track the humidity of my plants. So I'll call it plants and click continue. We don't need analytics, create project. Click continue. And we're gonna choose a web app. This name's never gonna be referenced, but I'll call it plants again. We don't need hosting and click register app. Okay, this screen is important. We need to grab this Firebase config variable and just copy it and put it in a text editor. We'll come back to that. This is what's going to let our Firebase app and our Angular app talk with each other. Click Continue to Console. And now go to Firestore Database and click Create Database. We're going to choose Test Mode. And this says Allow Read and Write if the current time is within the next month. Click Next. And for a location, just choose whichever you are closest to. You can come to this website if you want to see the lookup for every name. I'll choose US West 2 and enable. Okay, at this point, we're done with Firebase. Um, we're not going to do anything manually. Our code is going to create all of our collections of documents. We'll discuss later how the documents are built. They're going to be called time buckets. Now we'll create the Angular app, ng new, and I'll call it real time dashboard. And I'm going to make sure that strict type checking is off for this. So double dash strict false. Would you like routing? Yes. And which style sheet? CSS. OK, let's jump into that directory. CD real time dashboard. And now we're going to install the library for chart.js. npm install or i chart.js. And next, we're going to install Angular Firebase and Angular Material. So ng add at angular slash fire. Would you like to install? Yes. So I'm running into an Angular 12 bug. Uh, essentially, it says there's a race condition. You can rerun the exact same command, and it'll work again. Now I'll use the arrow keys, and I'll move down to plants, and press Enter. Now I'll install Material. So ng add at angular slash material. Would you like to install? Yes. And any theme, typography, yes. And browser animations, they're not needed, but yes. Now I'll open a new tab to run our server. ng serve, and I'll tell it the port, double dash port. I'll go for 4200, double dash open. Our basic app works. And now we'll jump back to the first tab and I'd like to open up our code. First thing I want to do is remove the boilerplate. So I'll go to source, app, appcomponent.html, and I'll scroll to the very bottom. This last line is the only line that we're going to keep. And when we do that, the app is going to go blank. Now I'm going to create a new page for us to work on. So ng generate component home, or ng gc home. Now I want to add that in. So source app app routing module.ts and I'll import home and I'll change our routes variable so every path that we could enter all points to the home component. Next I'm going to go back to that Firebase config variable that we saved and for that I go to source environments environment.ts I'll add a comma and a new line and I'll paste it in. We need to change this just a little bit so remove the semicolon and instead of Firebase config equals, it'll just be Firebase colon. 
these are the credentials we're going to use to have the two apps talk with each other. Now we're going to go to source app app module.ts and we're going to add in the libraries for Firebase as well as a direct link to the environment file that we just edited. Because I like to put material into my projects, I'm adding in all of the material libraries that I'd like. When that's added, I go to imports, import all of the Angular Fire libraries. And this one line here is what gets us to have the Firebase and Angular apps talk with each other. So we're initializing Angular Fire using the Firebase object in the environment file. And we'll finish working on this file by putting all of those material imports into this array. Now all that's left is to work on the home page. Chart.js uses a canvas, so I'm going to set up the canvas size in the CSS file. We're going to add a bit to the home page, and as soon as we do, it's going to break because it's looking for functions that we haven't written yet. But what we're doing is, at the very bottom, we're setting up the chart.js canvas, and right above that, it's going to be a printout of the immediate sensor values. At the very beginning is going to be a form that will, will allow us to create the simulated data. So we're going to be able to simulate humidity, temperature, and then click an insert button to insert that and upload it to Firebase. On the home.ts file, I'm going to import our Angular Firebase libraries. I'll import dbounce, which is just a little helpful for sending data and listening for it. We'll add Firebase and Firestore. And finally, we'll import chart. So chart's a little bit difficult to use, and it needs this bottom line to register all of the objects that are inside the chart library. Next, we're going to add the class variables. We can group them up. Right here are our chart.js variables. We need a canvas. We need a context for the HTML's canvas and we have the chart itself. We're gonna plot out the humidity, not both humidity and temperature. The next set, this is gonna be for our simulations. We'll have a small form at the top that lets us put in a humidity sensor reading, a temperature sensor reading, and then we'll also store the historical humidity. And just so we can see things printed out on screen, like we do right here, we'll be able to monitor the current sensor readings. The constructor itself is gonna take in Firestore, so a direct link to our database and we'll set up our array for historical values as empty. Next, the ng on init. First, we're gonna initialize the humidity chart. It'll be a blank chart, which we have on screen right now. Then we're gonna to want to gain access to two readings. Uh, in our database, we have two types of documents. We have one document called current, and it's the listing of all sensor data. It goes into this current document. And every time the sensors are read, this document gets overwritten and overwritten and overwritten. So here we can say we're always going to reference the current doc, hard-coded as current. Then we have time buckets. And for me, I'm listing everything as a one-hour block. So for every hour, there's going to be one new document, and it's going to have a historic name. So year, month, day, hour will be its name. When we read a value, we're going to see just like this, current humidity and temperature. So we grab the current sensor reading. So we go to Firestore, our garden plants collection, go to the current doc, and always watch for a value change. The next thing we do when we load our app is we're going to go to the database again, to the garden plants collection, to the current doc, and subscribe to this data. If there is data and it has the humidity value, then we want to add it to our chart. The add to chart function is below. We'll get to that in just a moment. Next thing we're going to do is look for the historical doc. So if there's any data that has been uploaded in the last hour, we'll go to our database, to our garden plants collection, to this hour's historical doc or time bucket. For every single measurement, historical measurement in this array, we're going to loop through it and add that measurement to our chart. So as soon as we load the dashboard, it will load the last hour's data. The next piece to look at is our insert data function. So when we click this insert button and we see this change, what's happening is in Angular, this insert is going to send the data to the database. Because we're observing it in our chart.js canvas, it's being brought back down from the database. So this insert data function, this is going to look at two documents, the current document and the historical time bucket. 
So we're going to create variables for the current and historical. And then we go to our database, then the collection of garden plants, and the current document. And then we overwrite, we set the value for humidity, temperature, and the timestamp. Then we send the exact same data and we merge it into an array for the historical document. Now, if we look back at Firebase, you can see that there is one document called current. Every time that I insert, that value changes. And when we look at the historical time bucket, we can see that it gets updated with this current value as well. That's everything we need, but it's not going to be very helpful if you'd like to simulate data outside of Angular. So I'll show you how to do that in Python now. So I'm going to go to the root of my app and create a new folder called Python sensor, and I'll create a file called sim.py so we can simulate our data. Well, the first thing we're really going to need to do is go back to Firestore, go to the gear and project settings, and go to service accounts. We need our Python script to be able to act as a service account. So click generate new private key and generate key. So be careful with this key. Whoever has it has full access to read and write on your database. I just moved it into my Python sensors folder and I'm going to rename it plants.privatekey.json. First, we're going to import our regular libraries. And if you don't have Google Cloud installed, it's sudo pip install google.cloud or google-cloud. And for Firebase admin, it'll be sudo pip install firebase-admin. Right in the path to your private key file that you just created. And then we're going to be able to tell Google where that file is. After this, I've hard-coded the collection name, Garden Plants. And I have two helper functions. One is for my arguments. Um, I have a dash C for, for how many times I'd like to write to the database and I have a dash P for how long I want to pause in seconds between all of the writes. Um, the next bit, build the historical doc name. So my historical docs are year, month, day, hour, and this is going to create that doc name for us. Okay, we're in the main function. We're going to parse the arguments and then get a connection to the database. After that, I'm going to say my humidity value is some random value. And for however many times I want to simulate a reading, we're going to have a for loop. I need access to two documents, the current doc and that time bucket for this hour right now. So this humidity line is a little complex, but all it says, just like temperature says build a random number, this says build a random number that's no farther than humidity max delta away from the previous number. And I set that to 10. So instead of having a whipsaw, It'll just be gradual changes in my graph. Next, I set up my data object of humidity, temperature, and timestamp. And I'm going to connect to the database, to our collection, to our current doc, and I'm going to overwrite the current doc. One thing to keep in mind is how you set up your timestamp. If you set it up on your local machine, it's free. If you use this line, firestore.servertimestamp, it costs you a write. So I don't use that. Now we've written to the current doc and all we have to do is write to the historical doc. This is a little different. We're writing to the array called historical measurements, but we're putting the same data in. And when that happens, the only difference between the current doc and the historical is the historical uses merge equals true. So it doesn't overwrite, it just adds to the array. That's it, that's how we simulate. So I'll go to that directory, cd python sensors, and I'll type python sim.py, and I'd like to run 10 of them, so dash c 10, and I'd like to pause one second in between, dash p 1. And as this runs, I can go back to Firestore, and I can watch it change the values again. And I can go to our dashboard, and I can watch it update live, and I think this is so cool. So that's all it takes to build a real-time dashboard in Angular and Firebase. If you have um, any ideas that you'd like me to show, uh, please let me know. And if you have any questions, I always respond to the comments. So thank you very much.